Dennis Kelsey, who was a foot soldier during the marches of May of 1963. Good morning, Janice. How are Good you today? Good morning. I'm doing great. Thank you. Great. Thanks for being here today. And I'd like to ask you some questions today about your involvement in the civil rights movement. What, uh, uh, how did you get involved with the civil rights struggle in Birmingham? Well, actually, I had a girlfriend whose mother and sister were involved in the movement. The mass meetings were held on Monday nights, and the mother and sister would go, and of course, my girlfriend had to go with them. And she would come back to school on Tuesdays talking about the mass meetings, but she never said anything about civil rights. Mm -hmm. She would be talking about uh, how crowded it was and all of the young, good-looking preachers that were there and the good singing and the cute boys. And so I thought, wow, I need to go to a mass meeting. So that's when I was really introduced to issues involving civil and rights. And that, what was that year? That was 1963. 1963. Mm -hmm. And that was at what church were you at? That was at New Pilgrim Baptist Church. Um, I got permission from my mother, my brother and I, and the, my next door neighbor walked to New Pilgrim Baptist Church. Uh, it was in the spring of 63, and uh, that, that's when I attended my first mass meeting. What happened at those mass meetings? Well, there were a lot of great speakers. King, Shuttlesworth, Abernathy, uh, Nelson Smith, Calvin Woods, Abraham Woods, all these guys. And at one point in the uh, meeting when they have finished with all of these elaborate speeches and this great singing, they would um, open the doors to the church. It's like an, uh, an invitation to discipleship, except they were inviting people to come and join the movement. And this young preacher, whose name was James Bevel, got up, and he, he wasn't dressed like the others. He had on denim, a 401 uh, pants with big flap at the top and all. And he asked the teenagers to meet him in the back of the, uh, in the church's annex. And we went there and, wow, Bevel polled the audience and asked, uh, how many people here from Oldman High School? And we raised our hand and cheered. And how many from Parker? And he named all the schools. We had a lot of school spirit, so we just cheered, and it was like a pep rally. Mm -hmm. And after he polled the audience, um, he went back and said, okay, and Ullman, didn't you take typing? And I took typing, so I raised my hand, and he asked, how many electric typewriters do you have? So wow, electric typewriters back then was probably like a computer mm -hmm. is today. And I said, well, we have one, but I get to type on it, because I'm a good typist. And he said, did you know at Phillips High School, um, they have three rooms of electric typewriters. They don't even use those things that you have at Oldman anymore. Phillips was a white school? Phillips was a white school. And I thought, wow, it's not fair. It's my first dose that something is wrong mm -hmm. with this picture. Well, he, he didn't stop there. He asked, um, do any of you guys at Oldman play football? And my brother was on the football team. He said, have you ever wondered why your helmets are always blue and white? but your colors are green and gray. He said, well, we always paint them the right colors. He said, but why do they come in blue and white? And of course we didn't know. And he said, because you get Ramses discards. And Ramses, which was a white school, when they get new equipment, you get their old equipment. And I thought, wow, this isn't fair. He didn't stop there. And he didn't just pick on Oldman. He used mm -hmm. other schools as well. But um, he asked, have you ever looked in the front of your books at your copyright date? I'd never looked at the copyright date. Table of contents, yeah. Mm -hmm. Copyright? Mm -mm. So he said, your copyright dates. Your books are outdated. I thought, wow. We're getting a secondhand education and didn't even know it. So he went on to say, if you want to do something about it, you can. You don't have a lot to lose. But your parents, if they get involved, they're going to jail, lose their jobs, nobody to take care of you. So after uh, James Bevel gave you this information mm -hmm. that sort of woke you up, if yes. you might say, what happened after that? Well, I started attending mass meetings on a regular basis. Um, I went to some student nonviolent workshops and learned freedom songs, um, learned that nonviolence was the only accepted behavior. Uh, we were told no matter what is said to you, what's done to you, you could only sing or pray. Uh, we were taught how to protect our heads if someone hit us. 
Was this in preparation for the march that was oh, yes. being planned? Yes. Project C. Project C. But I wasn't calling it Project uh -huh. C. We were calling it D Day. D Day. May 2nd, 1963 was D Day. And it was like a secret. We didn't say it out loud to our parents that D Day is coming, but everybody knew it. Thursday, May 2nd, 1963, D Day. We want to go and get our freedom. So uh, after uh, the, the, the continuation of the mass meetings mm -hmm. and preparation, tell us, tell me about what uh, the sort of the rules of the game were going to be, the rules of the marches, the way you were supposed to act and not act. Okay. We were told that, um, well, I did not share the information with my parents, number one. On that morning, May 2nd, I got up and I just, I was just filled with so much emotion and excitement about what was going to happen. I knew I was going to jail. They, they told us if we march, you're going to go to jail. Uh, but if, if someone says something to you, you could not respond to it. You could sing, you could pray, but you could not respond to any negatives that, that someone might say. So that morning I got up, I packed my purse. I had the soap, the toothpaste, the deodorant, and I'm saying the because we had one of each. I'm from a large family. But um, I packed my purse. My mother sensed something was going on, mm -hmm. and uh, she said, uh, look, I'm sending you to school. And don't you go and get yourself in any trouble because I don't have any money to get you out. I said, yes, ma'am. I told her exactly what she needed to hear. And I was going to school. I just wasn't going to stay. Right. <laughs> so we got the plan was to go to school, and when the bell rang to end first period and go to the uh, session room, we were to walk out. And I had a, one other little issue. I had a good GPA and uh, had a... I guess an unusual amount of respect for teachers. And I asked my teacher in first period, suppose some kids walk out of your class, what's going to happen? And she said, if everybody walks, there's nobody to fail. I said, oh my God, I told everybody, they don't do anything to us. All we need to do is get up and go. And when the bell rang, that's exactly what we did. We walked, um, my school was located uh, on the south side where UAB's campus is now and we were to walk to 16th Street Baptist Church. There were people driving around the campus offering rides, ministers from different churches. You need a ride to 16th Street? Most of us chose to walk. It was warm. We were walking in droves. We were singing, we were planning. It was just an intense situation. I 